Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the browser development tools. All the major browsers have it, whether it be Chrome or Firefox or uh, Microsoft Edge. So what the browser development tools allows you to do, it allow you, allows you to go into the code and make little changes to see how they would imp impact your page without having to actually go and uh, write the actual code. This is a way that you can test things out quickly and if, you, and if you see that the changes you made you like, then you can actually go to the code make changes. So in this scenario here, uh, we just upgraded our, our form software. Uh, we just uh, licensed it from uh, another company. And the, uh, in, up, in the upgrade, it did some damage to our user interface. So uh, I just wanted to change some simple text color from uh, black to white just for now until uh, I had time to assign one of my developers to uh, go in there and uh, fix up the skin. Uh, because I run the business, it's very difficult for me to find time to actually sit down and write code these days. I'll leave you with this before I get into that little code sample. Uh, number one, uh, this is for a beginner of HTML, beginner of CSS. So if you're a pretty experienced nerd jockey, this is not going to be a video for you. And number two, when you develop your career uh, as a developer, at some point you're going to have to make a decision if you're going to continue as a developer or become a manager, go into management in a company or maybe start your own company. It's very, very difficult to write the code and to run the business and have the vision for the business. It's very difficult. Um, so that day may come. Now, I know people have done very well who stayed coders and technical implementers, if you will. I know other people have done very well who've gone further into management or sales or maybe started their own business. So both routes are good. It just depends on your personal taste. All right, let's jump into the screencast. I decided to upgrade the Killer Sites community here, killersites.com slash community, which is my forum. Been around for a long time. And I use it quite a bit now for the mentoring group because we got all kinds of private club features and so on. So this forum is quite useful for that. So with the upgrade of the forum, of course, uh, they messed up uh, some visual aspects to the template here. You can see it here. And you can see how it's all black. Steph's coding community is black, this is black. So it's not very pretty, not very nice. So I had to go in there and fix it. Now, if you, Look at the code. Now, how did I access this code? I just clicked on an item and I just hit inspect. Boom, and this code window appears. This is Chrome, of course. And you can see there's a lot of code going on here. If I expand things, you know, it's pretty complex, a pretty complex form. So what I want to do is I want to be able to change this to white, this text here to white, to change this to white. So how do you do that? So you, you find the particular item in the page. You find it, there we go. And when I highlight it, boom, you see this little pop-up window. As you're going to see the pop-up window appear here. So I'm highlighting the code, and I click on it, and it tells me about it, the accessibility, the class, etc. If I look here on the side, you see this is the actual CSS ID that affects this heading. Now the heading just turned white because I did something. Now by default. This heading's color is inherited from the previous, the div that it sits inside of. Inherit, you got to do my CSS course. Anyhow, but if you see here, look at this. I added this myself. So I just overrode this class here like so. So you see it here, period. That's why this is white. The form software is pretty advanced. So it went into the uh, form editing customization view. So they provide smartly a custom CSS where you can add your own CSS to override the, the default CSS. So what I did is I just simply override it like this. I just use white for now because I have 10,000 other things I got to do. And I didn't want to get one of my coders on this for now because it's just a quick fix. So yeah, so it turned it white. So that's pretty cool, right? So how about this here? This is black too. So let me select that. There we go. We got it here. See, it's also set to color inherit and it's black or gray, whatever that is. Anyway, so you see here's the class. Excuse me, here's the ID. So I'm gonna select the ID, boom, boom. Go back here to the custom CSS, bang, bing. And I'm gonna set its color to white as well. 
Boom. All right, you like those special effects. So I'll save that. So I'm going to reload the page. Boom, it's white. So when we select the this particular item, see, watch when I highlight over the code, the web browser highlights the chunk that I'm highlighting here, right? See that? Boom. It gives you, so if I look here, we see it actually shows me that I added this code, which overrides the default, which is color inherent. You notice there's a strike through. So this is the Chrome development tools telling me that this has been overridden. So that's kind of useful, right? Because one of the big problems when you're writing CSS is that the CSS code can become very complex and it can become very complex because you have all these hierarchies within CSS. That's the cascade. CSS is short for cascading style sheets. That is an example of the cascade. So this rule here is cascading and it's overriding this rule here. Uh, that's why it has a little strike out here on the, t on the uh, code. Quick little video, I thought you'd find this useful. This is good design here with this forum software. They allow you to go in there and edit a custom CSS file. It's always good to never mess with some root or uh, foundational code of an application unless you have to, uh, simply because it could have all kinds of effects all over the place. So when you have the ability to add, in the case of the web in web development, a custom CSS that could be dropped in and it can override the, the default code. And there's a lot of code, trust me. This is cleaner, it's better. This is a design pattern in programming, which would be called a, I guess you call it a filter or decorator. On an object level, I guess this would be dependency injection. Anyway, it's getting pretty advanced there. But uh, anyway, I thought you'd find it interesting if you're a noob, how the dev tools could be very useful. The dev tools allow you to change things on the fly, right? So I could go here, I can say, well, I'll change this to red. All of a sudden it's red. So you can test out color. So this is in the browser memory. So it's not actually affecting the code. The actual code that's being loaded by the browser is not changed. So I'm not changing code in this. I'm changing the rendered code. You got to understand there's a process in page rendering, code rendering. When a web browser loads a page from a web server, it reads the code, it processes the code, puts it into memory, and then it operates on that code in memory. So what I'm doing here in the dev tools, I'm actually just changing the code that's currently in memory, but I'm not actually changing the original CSS files. See, it turns yellow. But if I just reload the page, watch, it's going to go back to white because when you change your values here, you're not actually changing the original code. You're changing the code that's in the browser's memory. If this is a little confusing to, for you, I totally understand. It's totally confusing for me. I'm just kidding. It used to be confusing for me. It isn't anymore. But this is part of understanding the environment that you're operating in in terms of your coding, right? Something I talk about all the time, just learning code is not learning to code. Learning to code means you understand the environment. So in the case of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which generally runs in web browsers, you have to understand how the web browsers operate. These dev tools, which I teach you how to use in my courses, of course, shameless plug, are very useful for all this kind of stuff. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Uh, that's it for now.